الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وبعد I begin ya akhwan la barikum and thanking my brothers at this masjid and my brothers from Salafi publications Sheikh Abu Khadija Sheikh Amjad Sheikh Abu Idris Sheikh Abu Hakim and other than them from our beloved brothers for their invitation and the good thought of their brother and tonight, inshallah ta'ala, ya khwan, I wanted to begin a talk regarding our Shaykh al-Allama, al-Muhaddith, Muqbid ibn Hadi al-Wadi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, and our days with him in the Maj. And I wanted to start, ya khwan, Allah barikum, as I began with that shukar for our brothers, I wanted to also begin, of course, with thanks to our Shaykh. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Wa asari ikhwan, fa kana fi dirasati ala yadihi a'adham al-athar fi hayati. That studying with Shaykh Muqbil had the greatest effect on my life. The best days of my life were in Damaj with Shaykh Muqbil rahimahullah ta'ala. Fa ta'alamtu minhu tadik al-ilm al-nafi' wa intifa'atu min al-juloosi indu intifa'an azeeman. And from Ikhwan, from him, I benefited a tremendous benefit from his direction and from his manner and from his defense of the Salafi methodology. And it was the advice of Shaykhuna, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, Shukr al ulama alladheen istafadta minhum. The Shaykh advised the students of knowledge with having thanks and gratitude for your teachers, those who instructed you, and those who taught you the affairs of the religion of Al-Islam. There is a thanks that is due to them, Ya Ikhwan, Allah Yabarik Fikum. And the Shaykh, he mentions the narration collected by Abu Dawood fi Sunanihi, and Abi Huraira sarajallahu anhu qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يشكر الله من لا يشكر الناس. That he who has not thanked the people is not thankful to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. So the person who was ungrateful to his teacher, and this is the shahid, this is the highlighting point of the narration, that those who are not thankful to their teachers, those who instructed them, those who benefited them and 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 taught them in the affairs of the religion. This ikhwan is ingratitude. So we are thankful, ikhwan, to those who instructed us. Also, ikhwan, we mentioned the narration of Al Qadi Abu Ali Hussein ibn Muhammad al Sadafi. And this ikhwan comes in Tariq Baghdad. He says, Samir to Imam Abu Muhammad al Tamimi bi Baghdad yakul, Malakum ta'khudun al ilma anna, wa testafiduna hu minna. This is a tremendous narration, Ya Ikhwan. Al Imam Abu Muhammad al Tamimi, he said, Ikhwan, what is the matter with you that you learn from us and that you benefit from us, but you do not ask Allah to grant us mercy? وَلَا تَكُونُ كَالَّذِينَ يَدْرُسُونَ الشَّيْءٍ ثُمَّ يَسْتَقِلُّونَ مَنْ أَلَّمَهُمْ مَبَادِيَ الْعِلْمِ This ikhwan is an important point. It is upon you to have honor and respect for those who taught you and to have thanks and gratitude for them. And do not be like those ikhwan who studied something of knowledge and began to devalue and begin to despise those who taught them the fundamentals of this religion. Ikhwan, over the summer, I ran into an elder who first taught me the makharij of the huruf, 
the proper pronunciation of the Arabic letters. And wallahi ikhwan, from the elder brothers, never had a chance to really go over and study, but when I saw him, I got nervous in my stomach. That Haber returned to me because he taught me the proper way to pronounce these huruf. To the point, ya ikhwan, la barifikum, I can remember like it was yesterday, he would say to me, the letter kha, think about clearing your throat. Ah. And I never forgot that, ikhwan. And every time I taught my children, whoever it may be, I remembered that lesson that he gave me. That ikhwan deserves thanks. So those individuals, ikhwan, if you come, who perhaps they have benefited in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perhaps Allah has blessed them to travel, to study, and to benefit. But that in no way, ikhwan, gives anyone the right to be haughty and arrogant and to puff themselves up over their brothers who taught them the fundamentals of the religion. Many of our brothers, ikhwan, they would not know about Sheikh al-Albani if it was not for some of the elder brothers who preceded them. They wouldn't know about ikhwan, a jam al Islamiyah. They wouldn't know about a damaj. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by way of our beloved brothers and teachers. So therefore, Ikhwan, it is incumbent upon us to be from those who are grateful and thankful to those who instructed us and taught us and honor them in the manner that they are deserving. For we have seen, Ikhwan, those who have kibr. And as it was mentioned, Ikhwan, and Shaykh Allah, he mentions this, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, in his advice to the students of knowledge, لا ينال العلم المتكبر ومستحي That two people will not obtain and benefit from knowledge The mutakabbir, the arrogant person And the mustahi, yani the one who is too shy As it relates to asking affairs of the religion and learning in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So therefore, ikhwan, even if someone taught you the articulation Of the Arabic language Or taught you, ikhwan, labirifikum, the tajweed of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who instructed you in the prayer, whatever it may be, from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Ikhwan, have thanks, have gratitude. And so we began with that, Ikhwan, but if you come, that thanks to our beloved Sheikh and to our beloved brothers. And Alhamdulillah, Ikhwan, after 14 years, we have returned to be among our brothers here in Birmingham. And after traveling, Ikhwan, some time, Allah, but if you come, Alhamdulillah, I am happy. And thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be before my brothers. As safar qita'un min al adab. Huh? Who knows the rest of the narration? Travel is a peace. Qita'atun min al adab is a piece of the punishment. What's the rest of the narration? Who knows? Hmm. Yamna wa hadakum. The narration states, Ya Akhwan, it prevents you from eating properly. And it prevents you from drinking properly, on the go, on the run. It prevents you from sleeping properly. So whoever from among you has finished with his needs, they let him hasten home to his family. And the ulama, ikhwan, have explained from them, Ibn Hajar and Fathul Bari, have explained, ikhwan, that this shows the virtue of being amongst one's family and what is difficult about being a stranger upon the road. Who collects that narration and who reports it? Which companion reports that narration and who collects it from the scholars of hadith? Hmm. It is collected by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim fi sahihihima on the authority of Abu Huraira. Naam. And that brings us, Ikhwan, to the topic of al-Rihla fi talab al-ilm. People ask, how did you end up in the Maj? How did you end up with Sheikh Muqbil there in Yemen? And this ikhwan came by way of learning the importance of traveling in the path of knowledge. Traveling in the path of knowledge. Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, rahimahullah ta'ala, in tremendous work, al-Rihla fi talab al-Hadith, al-Talab al-Ilm, 
He mentions Ikhwan traveling in pursuit of knowledge. And he brings a chapter regarding those companions, those from the companions who would travel great distances to learn one narration. Those who would travel great distances to learn a single narration. قال حدثني عبد الله بن محمد بن عقيل بن أبي طالب أن جابر بن عبد الله حدثه قال بلغني عن رجل من أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حديث سمعه من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لم أسمعه منه. So it mentions إخوان that Jabir he narrated or stated that it reached him that one of the companions of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, had heard a narration from the Prophet that Jabir had not heard. That Jabir had not heard. So I purchased a camel. Now imagine this, Ikhwan. He did not purchase this camel for doing business or even Ikhwan for some long journey, a journey for one narration. A journey for one narration, purchasing Ikhwan, a riding animal, a riding beast, so as Ikhwan to hear this one narration directly from the companion who heard it, from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he says, Ikhwan, let me So I purchased a camel and I saddled it. Fasirutu ilayhi shaharan hatta ataytu sham. And I traveled for a month till I reached Sham. A month journey, Ikhwan. Purchased a camel, traveled a month journey so as to hear one narration that a companion heard directly from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That Ikhwan is a raghbah. That is a strong desire to learn the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Can you imagine now Ikhwan giving up as we talked about in the narration the food of your home, your wife's cooking, giving up the drink that you would normally have and your comfort, giving up Ikhwan sleeping regularly and properly, giving that up Ikhwan traveling and in those days Ikhwan on the back of a camel, in some instances by foot, as we find in the narrations of Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, that he would travel great distances Ikhwan for narrations sometimes by foot. And it mentions Ikhwan in his biography that there would be points, Ikhwan, that he would not have anything to eat for three days or like this except the grass of the earth. Leaves and the likes of this of the earth, Ikhwan, that he would nourish himself with those things. So here we see, Ikhwan, that great desire to learn and study the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of us don't even come five blocks to the masjid. The lessons taking place. Knowledge is being disseminated. People are learning the statements of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the meanings of the ayat of the Book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And some of us, Ikhwan, will not travel the distance of five miles. And here we see the noble companion, Jab, who sat at the feet of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And here he is traveling, Ikhwan, to another companion so as to get a closer chain of narration on the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And another narration, Ikhwan, حدثني مسلم بن يسار أن الرجل من الأنصار ركب من المدينة إلى عقبة بن عامر وهو بمصر حتى لقيه فقال له أنت سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من ستر مؤمنا في الدنيا ستره الله يوم القيامة. He mentions Ikhwan in this tremendous narration that a man from the Ansar in here. It, the name is not mentioned, but we'll see in another narration, as we know from Shaykh Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad, the importance of making jama', bringing together the different wordings of a narration, so we piece together more benefit. We get a fuller picture of the narration when we take all the different wordings. And to the point, Ikhwan, the Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, when he wrote regarding the hajj of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as it was related by Jabir ibn Abdullah, hakadha ya Ikhwan, he brought the different wordings of the narration. He brought the different wordings of the narration and what he did, Ikhwan, is he would put brackets so he would give you the base of the narration and then he would add the different wordings in brackets to give you a fuller picture of everything that is taking place in those tremendous narrations of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as it relates to Hajj. Now, So it mentions here, Ikhwan, that he traveled from Al-Medina to Uqba ibn Amr in Egypt. 
until he met with him and he said to him, Did you hear from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Man satara mu'minan fi dunya, satarahu Allah yawm al qiyamah. Whoever covers a believer's faults in this dunya, Allah will cover his faults on yawm al qiyamah. This ikhwan is an important narration. But listen to the end of the narration, and this is vital. Qala fa kabbar al ansari, wa hamid Allah thumman saraf. He mentioned the narration, Ikhwan, that he said, Allahu Akbar. He praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and left. He came for that one word, Ikhwan, that one narration from the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sacrificing from his family and from his food and from his drink and from his sleep until the end of that, Ikhwan, so as to hear one narration from the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the next narration, Ikhwan, qala Amr ibn Abi Salama, قُتُلِ الْأَوْزَاعِ أَنَا أَلْزَمُكَ مُنذُ أَرْبَعَ أَيَامِ وَلَمْ أَسْمَعْ مِنْكَ إِلَّا ثَلَاثِينَ حَدِيثًا Allah Akbar Amr ibn Abi Salama, Ikhwan, he said to Al-Awza'i He said, I've been with you for four days and I've only heard 30 narrations from you Allah Akbar, 30 narrations He said, I've only heard 30 narrations from you in four days So Al-Awza'i said, Ikhwan you're making light of 30 narrations in four days? Then he narrated Ikhwan that Jabir traveled to Egypt. And here is Ikhwan, the fuller picture that we just talked about in the previous narration, that he bought a riding animal. Allah ibn Fikum. And he traveled to ask Uqba ibn Amr an hadith in wahid. One saraf. He asked about a single narration and he left. He traveled to Quran for a single narration. And look what Al Awza'i says after this. And you're making light of 30 narrations in four days. This narration shows Ikhwan that great desire to study on both accords. First, it shows the, the great desire of the likes of Jabir ibn Abdullah to travel by camelback across lands, Ikhwan. So as to hear a single narration from the Messenger of Allah it also shows the great diligence of Amr ibn Abi Salama that he wanted to hear more narration from Al-Awza'i than those 30 narrations that he had heard in those four days. And I wanted to mention this next narration, Ikhwan, as a matter of clarification as this is a narration that I have quoted repeatedly over the years and the narration is not authentic and I want to clarify from the clarification of our Shaykh Shaykh Muqbil Rahimahullah Ta'ala فَهَذَا الشُعْبَ ibn al-Hajjaj لَمَّا حَدَّثَهُ شَيْخُهُ أَبُوْ إِسْحَاقْ بِحَدِيثِ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ ibn عَطَى عَنْ عُقْبَ ibn عَامِرْ فِي فَضْلِ الْوُضُوْ he mentions Ikhwan that Shu'ba, when his Sheikh Abu Ishaq related to him the narration of Abdullah ibn Atta on the authority of Uqba regarding the virtue of wudu, he said to his Sheikh Ikhwan, Asami'ahu Abdullah ibn Atta min Uqba ibn Amr. Did he hear it directly from Uqba ibn Amr? He questioned the chain. Faghadiba Abu Ishaq, his Sheikh became angry according to this wording of the narration. ثُمَّ رَحَلَ شُعْبَ إِلَىٰ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ إِبْنْ عَطَى بِمَكَّةِ And then it mentions that he traveled, according to the narration, he traveled to Mecca, شُعْبَ, to ask Abdullah ibn Atta regarding this narration. Again, look at this travel, according to the narration. We'll discuss the veracity of the narration momentarily, بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكُ تَعَالَىٰ فَقَالَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بِنْ عَطَى حَدَّثْنِي بِهِ سَعْدِ بِنْ إِبْرَاهِيم so Abdullah ibn Atta, according to the narration, he said that it was reported to me by Sa'ad ibn Ibrahim. Was Sa'ad Madani. Sa'ad Madani. In another wording, it mentions that Imam Malik said that Sa'ad did, did not make Hajj that year. And according to the narration, Shu'ab had traveled in yani, relation to this one narration, not even for the sake of Hajj at that point. So it mentions here, Ikhwan, he said that he did not make Hajj this year. He is in Al Medina. فَرَحَلَ شُعْبَ إِلَى الْمَدِينَ So Shu'ab, according to the narration, traveled to Al Medina. Fakala had bihi, meaning Sa'ad ibn Ibrahim narrated the narration to me. 
And he said, حدثني به زياد بن مخراق And he mentioned that it was reported to me by Ziyad ibn Mikhraq, who was Basri. So now according to the narration, Shu'ba went from Basra to Mecca to Medina. Now he's got to go back to Basra. One narration. So I mentioned Ikhwan. ثم قال Ziyad حدثني به شهر ibn Hawshab عن أبي ريحانة And then he mentions Ikhwan that it was reported to me by Shahar ibn Hawshab. On the authority of Abi Rayhana, on Uqba ibn Amir, on the authority of Uqba ibn Amir, فَقَالَ شُعْبَ أَفْسَدُهُ عَلَيَّ شَهَرْ Shahar has ruined the narration. And Shahar has ruined the narration. And Nisa'i said regarding him, إِخْوَانَ لَيْسَ بِالْقَوِي That he is weak. Allah يَبْرِ فِيكُمْ And therefore, إِخْوَانَ According to the narration, Shu'ba said, he has ruined it. ولو صح لا كان حب إلي من أهلي ومالي وولدي had the narration been authentic would have been more beloved to me than my family and my wealth and my children. However, إخوان as we said we have related this narration repeatedly over the years. الشيخ ونا الشيخ مقبل يسأل وقد جاءت القصة عند الخطيب وغيره بأطول من هذا with a longer wording. ولكنها من طريق نصر بن حماد وهو كذاب. However, it came by way of Nasr ibn Hamad, and he is a liar. And this is what Yahya ibn Ma'in also stated regarding this narrator, Nasr ibn Hamad, that he is a kathab. And some of the ulama say, Matruq al-Hadith, his narrations were abandoned. Shaykh Unai says after this, Rahimahullah, وَقَدْ حَدَّثْنَا بِتِلْقَ الْقِصَّ مِرَارًا We have reported this narration Repeatedly, many times, and from the Shaykh is where I first heard the narration, actually reading it in Asbab al Nuzul, or a portion of it. Wafiha enna shu'ba qal, afsada aliya shahar, the shahar has ruined it. Walau sahali la kana hab ilayya min ahli wa mali wa waladi wa nas ajma'in. And this particular wording he mentions an additional wording. And had it been authentic, it would have been more beloved to me than my family and my wealth and my children and all of mankind. So look what the Shaykh said after this, Ikhwan. Allah. We seek Allah's forgiveness. Look at this Imam. This great Imam, Ikhwan, clarifying, Ikhwan, the truth. If the truth is against you, Ikhwan, you clarify. Allah be The Shaykh says, For in al qissa la tathbut, because the story is not authentically reported. And the Shaykh, he mentioned this, Ikhwan, in Gharat al-Fisal, ala al-Mu'tadeen, ala Qutb al-Ilal. Now, there are other narrations, Ikhwan, over the years, Allah ibn Fikum, that we have mentioned repeatedly, and I wanted to take a moment to sort of clarify some of them. The well-known narration of Fudayl ibn Iyad, that he was a highway robber. You remember the narration, Ikhwan? And it mentions, Ikhwan, that he was so feared because of his, yani, might, in the road, that the people, when they, if they heard that Fulveh was in the path, according to the narration, they would take another path. And it mentions Ikhwan that one day he was yani, going to see uh, some woman, according to the narration, and he heard the, yani, the Imam in the Masjid reciting the Quran. Has not the time come? For those whose, heart, whose hearts find fear in Allah to, to, yani, to take the truth or to carry the truth. And according to the narration, he said, Naam ya, 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 naam, uh, Rabbi qad ana. Naam. He said, yes, the time has come, according to the narration. And it says, that he left yani, his residence and he made hijrah to Mecca and he stayed there. And became, as we know, the great Imam Fudayl ibn Iyad. The problem is that the narration is not authentic. And therefore, Ikhwan, we do not attribute to the Salaf or to the people in general, we do not attribute to them that which they are free from. So therefore, Ikhwan, it is incorrect to carry that particular narration. And we clarify that, Ikhwan, in the work, the stories of the repenters. Also, Ikhwan, the narration of Imam al-Bukhari regarding him coming to Baghdad and when the people heard that Imam al-Bukhari was coming to Baghdad, it was said that they wanted to test his knowledge. 
So 10 scholars came with 10 different narrations. And it says that they mixed up the chains with the, with the different wordings. So as to see if he was able to yeah, and he make light of what was going on in the narrations. According to the narration, when they mixed up the narrations, it's 100 narrations. And he was able, according to the narration, to put every chain back with his proper metin. The problem is the narration is not authentic. It is reported in the narration on some of the some unknown narrators. There are unknown narrators in that chain of narration, and therefore, ya khwan la barifikum, it is not permissible to attribute that narration to Imam al-Bukhari. And there's no question that he had, of course, the tremendous memory from the Hufad of this religion. And they asked Imam al-Bukhari, ya khwan, how he was able to memorize in such a fashion. And it mentions in his biography, he said, a single word, at takrar repetition. And we'll talk more about that, inshallah ta'ala, ikhwan, in the coming lesson, bi-ithnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. Naam. Now these narrations, ikhwan, I mentioned them as Shaykhuna Shaykh Rabir, hafidhahullah ta'ala, he said, that some people have something of tasahul as it relates to narrations on other than the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We know from the narration, مَنْ كَذَبَ عَلَيَّ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَلِتَبَوَّ مَقَعَدُهُ مِنَ النَّارِ Whoever lies upon me intentionally his seat has been prepared from in hellfire. And it's Ibn Malik, Ikhwan, who was from the Mukthiri, from those who narrate over a thousand narrations on the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ikhwan, he said that that narration prevented him from narrating abundantly. Now, as Shaykh al-Bani and others have mentioned, Ikhwan, we do not believe that Anas was going to lie on the Messenger of Allah intentionally. He's from the trustworthy, noble companions. What he intended by that, Ikhwan, is khata. The more you narrate, the more you relate, the greater chance you have of making mistakes. And so even though he was from the Mukthirun, what prevented him from narrating even more abundantly was that narration of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at the taqwa. Look at the concern of the noble companions. Some of us, Ikhwan, we narrate willy-nilly as they say. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did without verification, without looking into the narration, without verifying the veracity of the narration, Ikhwan. The noble companions, Ikhwan, who sat at the feet of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look, Ikhwan, at their taqwa, look at their concern, look at their care. How much more us, Ikhwan, centuries, centuries from that light. So we must, Ikhwan, be mindful of this. At any rate, Shaykhuna Shaykh Rabi, he said, Ikhwan, that though some people have, yeah, there's something of tisahil, or they're more lenient as it relates to narrations on, for example, the, 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 the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, the Salaf. Shaykh Una Shaykh Rabi said, La, we should not attribute to a person that which they did not say, and we should therefore, Ikhwan, ascertain the veracity and the authenticity of every narration that we relate, whether we are narrating on the Messenger of Allah, Sallam, of course, that is more yani strict, no question, but we should also, Ikhwan, no doubt, be mindful and careful of narrating outside of that, that which a person did not say or do. So that brings us, Ikhwan, to Ar-Rihla. Well, we mention Ar-Rihla. And then we mention, Ikhwan, la fikum, why Yemen in particular? Of course, our Sheikh was there, and that tremendous Markaz, Mahad, that institute of learning, Dar al-Hadith, which we will talk about, inshallah ta'ala, in the coming talks, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. But the Shaykh used to always mention, Ikhwan, the virtue of the people of Yemen. He used to constantly mention the virtue of the people of Yemen, and there's no doubt, Ikhwan, in living there and spending time amongst the Yemenis, Ikhwan, you see the tremendous humility and softness of heart that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was mentioning in the narration collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أتاكم أهل اليمن هم أرقوا أفئدة وألي قلوبا الإيمان يمان والحكمة يمانية He mentions Ikhwan in the narration in the meaning 
The people of Yemen have come to you. They have the softest hearts. Faith is Yemeni and wisdom is Yemeni. And that particular word in Yaquan is specifically collected by Imam al-Bukhari as for the riwayah of Imam Muslim. And in this wording, Yaquan, there is the additional wording of wal fiqh. Wal fiqh, yani proper understanding of the religion, is Yemeni. Imam al Bukhari, Yaquan, he said regarding this question Does anybody know where yani, the name Yemen came from? Why it was named Yemen? According to yani, some of the historians, as we'll quote from Imam al Bukhari here. Anyone familiar with this, Yaquan? Tayyip. Imam al-Bukhari, he said, Rahimahullah, Sumiyat al-Yemen, li'annaha an Yamin al-Ka'aba. It is said it was called Yemen because it is in the right direction, to the right side of the Ka'aba. Hakeh al Imam al-Bukhari mentions, and there are other wordings, other statements, but I wanted to mention that I thought it was a benefit. Allah ibn fikum. Regarding this narration, Ibn Hajar, he quotes from Ibn Salah, bi'annahu la mani'a, that there is no objection in taking this narration at face value. Because there is ikhtilaf amongst the scholars of exactly what is intended here by the people of Yemen. But he says, Ibn Salah says, that there is no objection to taking this narration at face value. And then he says, after this, Ikhwan, he says, Ikhwan, that what is intended in the narration is the virtue of the people of Yemen over others from the East. Tremendous, Ikhwan. And what's the reason for this? The reason for that, Ikhwan, he mentions, is their willful submission to matters of faith. Entered Islam, Ikhwan, easily. Didn't fuss, didn't fight. Came easily and therefore, because of this, as some of the ulama have mentioned, <coughs> the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this tremendous narration. Bi khilafi ahl al-mashriq wa ghayrihim As opposed to the people of the East, others from the East, Allah yibari fikum. Qal al Rahimahullah. Al hikma ibara an al ilm. That here in the narration, what is intended by hikmah is knowledge. Is knowledge of the affairs of the rulings of Al Islam. Al mushtamil al al ma'rifa billah tabarak wa ta'ala. That comprises knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The affair of al tawheed. The affair of al tawheed. Allah ibn Fikum. The asma wa sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rububi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one having knowledge of the affairs of the tawheed and the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he mentions after this in Nawi, Al Mashub, Minafad al Basira, also accompanied by discernment, with tahdeeb al nafs, self rectification. Look at all of this, Ikhwan, from this hikmah, with tahqiq al haq. Bihi, the affirmation and implementation of the truth. And rejecting, following desires and falsehood. If this Ikhwan, as we talk about the Messenger of Allah, having those concise yet comprehensive words. He says, Hikmah, and look at all that we extract from that one word. Look what the ulama ikhwan are able to extract from a single word in the narration. Allah be And this is what is intended by those concise yet comprehensive words of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Entire volumes have been written about a single narration, the Hadith of Jibril, for example. Allah be So therefore, ikhwan, this is what is intended by hikmah. Wa qala Abu Bakr ibn Durayd, kullu kalima wa'adhatka wa and he mentions, Ikhwan, 
that Abu Bakr ibn Duraidi said that every word that exhorts you, gives you a sermon, teaches you something, that censures you, rebukes you, that calls you to noble deeds or prohibits you from despicable acts, all of that is included under the meaning of hikmah. Again, a single word, Ikhwan, but we extract from that tremendous benefit. Now, again, Ikhwan, as I mentioned, there is a difference of opinion regarding the meaning of the narration, but I wanted to mention what our Shaykh al allama Salih al-Fawzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, says regarding this. He was asked, is this narration specific to the time? Is it restricted to the time of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or is it applied generally and to the day of resurrection. Shaykh al-Fawzan, he said, This is generally applied unto the day of resurrection. It is generally applied to the Muslims of Yemen. And again, Ikhwan, as Shaykh Sheikh Muqba used to always clarify, this does not mean, Ikhwan, that every single individual who is Yemeni, for example, has that fadl. If a person, for example, is khabif, despicable, wicked, shi'i, or like this, ikhwala bidifikum, then one will not praise him in this fashion. But generally speaking, this is the affair of the people of Yemen, as mentioned in the narration. And that is why, ikhwan, one of the benefits of dal hadith being in Yemen, one cannot overlook that, ikhwan, the welcoming nature of the people coming from around the world to Yemen and the hospitality that was shown to us. I remember, Ikhwan, we were in the house of Shaykh Una Shaykh Muqbil, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and one of the students from Yemen, from Damaj, he said, because at that, at that time, Ikhwan, the only people who cooked were the Yemenis. So the Yemenis had different days that they had to cook, from Aden, from Yani Sana, from Hadramot. They had their own days to cook. And the Shaykh deemed that the Yani, those who came from outside, the visitors, their brothers from outside of Yemen, that he didn't want them to have to cook because he wanted to show them hospitality from being guests in the country. Students and guests in the country. Look at the hospitality. So the sheikh looked at me and he said, Malik, can you cook? And I said, La, sheikh, I'm married. <laughs> and Allah, the sheikh, he laughed. He has such a sense of humor, which we'll touch on also. Be in the lahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. Naam. So one cannot overlook, Ikhwan, the virtue of that markaz, that mahad being placed in al-Yemen because of the great virtues of those people in general. Now, Ikhwan, I wanted to move to the praise of the scholars for Sheikh Muqbil and the advice of the scholars to study in the match. الثناء على الشيخ مقبل والنصيحة بالدراسة بالدماج. It was stated, Ikhwan, that Sheikh Al-Albani, he said, رحمه الله تعالى, هناك في اليمن لأخينا الشيخ مقبل لبن هادي الوادعي معهد يدرس فيه بنفسه فانصحكم بالذهاب إليه. It mentions, Ikhwan, that he said, there in Yemen, there is a center that was founded by our brother, Sheikh Muqbil ibn Hadi al-Wadi'i, and he teaches there himself, so I advise you to go there and study. And again, Ikhwan, this is the great imam of hadith from the teachers of Sheikh Una Sheikh Muqbil. And Sheikh Una Ikhwan, when he was giving his life story, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and this is recorded, he said that when he was in al Medina, Ikhwan, that he used to go to the lessons of Sheikh Al-Albani, the private sittings of Sheikh Al-Albani, specifically because of the great fawa'id, the great fawa'id that would yani, be taught in those lessons. And I talked earlier, Ikhwan, about shukr and tawadur. And I remember Sheikh when I Sheikh Mukbil mentioning, Ikhwan, that once he had contacted Sheikh Al-Albani and he wanted to have something of a munaqasha with him about a particular issue, but when he heard the sheikh's voice, his love and his respect, his haber for the sheikh, he just asked about his family, gave salams, and got off the phone. 
Allah ibn fikum ya ikhwan. And the Shaykh, he mentioned that Allah ibn fikum in some of his lessons. Naam. وَقَالَ الشَّيْخَ رَبِيعِ Ibn Hadi al-Madakhili hafidhah Allah ta'ala He said regarding Shaykhuna huwa al-allama al-muhaddith al-mujahid mujadid al-da'wat al-salafiyya bil-yamin al-shaykh Muqbil ibn Hadi ibn Muqbil ibn Qa'ida al-Hamdani al-wadi'i min qabilati Ali al-Rashid So he said that he is the noble scholar the great muhaddith, the mujahid, the reviver of the Dawah Salafiyyah in Yemen. As Shaykh Muqbil ibn Hadi, ibn Muqbil ibn Qaida al Hamdani al Wadi'i, from the tribe of Ali Rashid. Wa kana safe and maslulin ala ahl al Batil. He was an unsheathed sword against the people of falsehood. Look at the description of Shaykh Una Yaqwan. La yakhaf illahi lawma talaim. Did not fear Ikhwan the blame of the blamers. An unsheathed sword prepared to go down, Ikhwan, with the people of falsehood. Min rawafid. From the extreme Shia. Shu'iyin, the socialists. Sufiya, the Sufis. Wahzab Munharitha and the deviant sex. Wakana Shaykhuna Yarud Alihim fi Muhadarati, and this these are my words, Fi Muhadaratihi, wa Durusihi, wa Kutubihi, Hatta Dakara Shaykh bi Annuhum Sambu Kitabuhu al Mahraj bin al Fitna Kitab Riba. Shaykh Mukbali said as we mentioned Iqwan that he used to refute the people of innovation. And the people of falsehood, in his lessons, in his exhortations, in his books, and to the point of one that the Sheikh he mentioned that the people called his book Al Makhraj bin Al Fitna a book of backbiting. This is Ikhwan how serious the Sheikh took clarifying the truth, Ikhwan, and refuting the people of falsehood. But the Sheikh he asked, where are these people's refutations against the innovators? You busy yourself with refuting the people of Sunnah and calling Shaykh Mukbil's book a book of Ghiba. Yet there are books that have shirk in them. There are books that have superstitions in them. There are books that call to all forms of innovation and you are sack it as it relates to those books. And we ask the people who constantly, always are striving to speak ill of our brothers from the Salafiyyin where are your rudun on the Jamaat Jama to Tabligh? Where are your rudun on the Ikhwan al Muslimun? Where are your rudun on the Rawafid? The Sufiya? Wallahi, Ikhwan, even some of them Ikhwan won't say a word of truth about the Takfiris. How ta'aban do you have to be, Ikhwan, the low hanging fruit of the, of the Takfiris, and you can't say a word of truth even regarding the Takfiris? But yet you'll speak against the Salafis. And warned against the Salafis. The Shaykh on the Shaykh Rabi, he mentioned, a Salafi doesn't behave like that. Your chest is open to speak about Salafis, but you sack it against the people of innovation. The Salafi don't move like that. And therefore, Ikhwan Abid Fikun, we see from our Shaykh when he asks, where are their rudu? Where are their refutations? Upon the people of innovation. Upon the Mubtadi'ah. Shaykh on the Shaykh Rabi, he continues, Ikhwan, Qama bid da'wa as Salafiya fil Yemen. He established a tremendous da'wah in Yemen. And he founded and established a Salafi scientific institute in the Maj that he named Dar al Hadith. Allah Akbar. I wanted to mention here, Ikhwan, at this particular juncture, something of the reason that the Shaykh he named his center Dar al Hadith. It is first and foremost because of his love of the Hadith, of the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, and his love of the people of Hadith. And therefore, he wanted to name his Markaz after the tremendous science and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But I want to mention, Ikhwan, a few of as it relates to this affair of being from Ahlul Hadith or Ashabul Hadith. We find, Ikhwan, that tremendous saying of the past, Ahlul Hadith hum Ahlul Nabi wa in lam yashabu nafasahu an fasahu sahibu. That the people of Hadith are the people of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And even if they did not meet him in purpose, uh, in person, excuse me, they are well acquainted with him. They are well acquainted with him. And then after this, Ikhwan, we mention the ayah from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يَوْمَ نَدْعُ كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ فَمَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَقْرَؤُونَ كِتَابَهُمْ وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ فَتِيلًا The statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the meaning. The day we will call every people with their respective imam, their imam, their leader. Such will read their records. And they will not be dealt with unjustly in the least. And in the tafsir we find the meaning of that, yani fatila, the meaning of that being ikhwan, the thread of a date seed. Yani something very minuscule. Insignificant. Whatever the fiqum. Qal ibn Kathir wa qala ba'du salaf hadha akbar sharaf li ashab al-hadith. He said, Ikhwan, this is the greatest honor for the people of hadith. This is the greatest honor for the people of hadith. Some of the salaf said. لِأَنَّ إِمَامَهُمَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Because their imam is the messenger of Allah صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ So they will be called on يوم القيام إخوان يعني with the messenger of Allah صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Look at this إخوان This is a tremendous statement from Ibn Kathir quoting from some of the salaf And I wanted to mention إخوان لَبْرِ فِيكُمْ As a relation to this designation of أصحاب الحديث وأهل الحديث because not everyone who claims to be from Ahl Hadith, Ikhwan, is from the people of Hadith. Some of the people of innovation, Ikhwan, have tried to steal and sully this tremendous name and honorific. Ashab al Hadith, Ahl Hadith. So I wanted to read from Al Manawi. Rahimahullah ta'ala clarifying, Ikhwan, you want to know who is a person of Ahl Sunnah, who is a person of Ahl Hadith in truth? Listen to this tremendous statement of Al-Manawi. فَإِنْ قِيلَ مَا بُثُوقُكَ بِأَنَّ تِلْكَ الْفِرْقَ النَّاجِيَ هِيَ أَهْلُ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ What is your proof? What is your evidence? That the same sect, they are the people of Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jama'ah? Listen to this, Ikhwan. مَا أَنَّ كُلَّ وَاحِدْ مِنَ الْفِرْقَ يَزْعَمْ أَنَّهُ هِيَ دُونَ غَيْرِهِ with the fact, Ikhwan, that while every deviant sect claims to be the safe sect. Shaq al-Bani used to always say, Ikhwan, you go to the Sufi, you go to the, to the Shay, they say, we're upon the Kitab and the Sunnah. All of them, Ikhwan, making this claim. All of them making the same claim, Ikhwan, la fikum. So how? How do we distinguish? How do we differentiate? Al-Manawi says, in Fayyad al-Qadir, Kulna laysa dhalika bil iddi'a. That is not simply something that is claimed. You cannot simply claim that you are from Ahlul Hadith. You cannot just simply claim upon your tongue, Ikhwan, that you are from the people of Sunnah, Wal Jama'ah, Wal Qawl Al Za'im, Bal Bin Naqal, An Jahabitha Hadihi Sana'ah, Wa A'immati Ahlul Hadith, Al Ladina Jama'u Sihah Al Ahadith, Fi Amr Al Mustafa. وَأَحْوَالِهِ وَأَفْعَالِهِ وَحَرَكَاتِهِ وَسَكَنَاتِهِ And he mentions after this, إِخْوَانَ لَبَرِفِيكُمْ This is not just some empty claim, but rather it is known by way of narration. It is known by way of narration from the noble scholars of this field of study, from the scholars of hadith. And the imams of hadith, those who compile the authentic narrations of Al-Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his conditions and his actions and all of his affairs 
وحوال الصحب والتابعين and also the conditions of the companions and the tabi'een. Now listen to what the Manawi goes on to say, Ikhwan. ثُمَّ بَعْدَ النَّقَلْ Then after looking at those narrations that the ulama have related in the books of Hadith and Bukhari and Muslim and other than that, looking at those narrations. After that, Ikhwan, he says, Allah يَبَرِ فِيكُمْ يُنْظَرْ إِلَىٰ مَنْ تَمَسَّكَ بِهَدِّهِمْ وَاقْتَفَى أَثْرَهُمْ وَاهْتَدَى بِسِرَتِهِمْ he said, Ikhwan, then you look to see if a person holds fast to their guidance, follows their example, and is guided by their lives. Fil usuli wal furur. Whether that is in the fundamental principles of the religion, or whether it is Ikhwan in the branch knowledges. Fayuhkam bi annahum hum. Only then. Do you say that that person is Ahlul Hadith? So let's pause for a moment here, Ikhwan. Let's look at it. As we said, every group claims that they are that saved sect, that they are Ahlul Hadith. The Messenger of Allah, as we see what al Manaw we said, we follow up the narrations. La tasubbu ashabi. Do not revile my companions. So when the Rafi that revile the companions of the Messenger of Allah, how can they be from that saved group? How can they in truth be from Ahlul Hadith? When the Sufi Ikhwan call on the dead in the graves and we read the narration of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at Du'ahu Al-Ibadah that supplication is worship. And by the way Ikhwan, this is what Alhamdulillah we learn from sitting in the Salafi Masajid. Wallahi Ikhwan, wallahi Ikhwan individual may have a PhD and cannot recognize that Dua to the Amwat, to the dead in the graves is Shirk Billahi Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Give me one small young Salafi student from the youth in the mass who's memorized al usul Thalatha and memorized the narration at duahu Al-Ibadah and he will refute that PhD. It's similar to what Shaykh Al-Albani said, Ikhwan, regarding the hadith of, the, of Al-Jariyah with a slave girl, Ikhwan, as we know, when the Messenger of Allah came to her and he said, Ain't Allah, where is Allah? And she said, Fissama. وَمَنْ أَنَا and who am I? أَنْتَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ فَأَعْتِكْهَا فَإِنَّهَا مُؤْمِنَا Free her for indeed she is a believer. Who collects that narration, ya ikhwan? I hear somebody whispering it. Say it. شُجَاعَ ikhwan. Bravery, huh? Imam Muslim. أَحْسَنْتُمْ Imam Muslim. Shaykh Al-Albani, he mentioned ikhwan. Here is this slave girl who tended to the sheep far off from the circles of knowledge. She wasn't sitting in the lessons on a daily yani, basis. She was all tending to the sheep, tending to the flock. But the aqeedah of, 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 of Ahl sunnah the aqeedah of the Messenger of Allah was, of Islam, was so well known, so widespread, that she knew the correct aqeedah of Al-Islam. Al-Albani said, now take one of those PhDs from Al-Azhar and you ask him, where is Allah Allah fi kulli makan? PhD, and he says Allah is everywhere. Slave girl far from the circles of learning. And she, Ikhwan, knows the correct creed and the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And therefore, Ikhwan, it is incumbent upon us to study at the feet of the people of Sunnah and to benefit from them and to, and to learn from them and relate that which we have heard from them to others. And I want to mention, Yani. I best we travel this one. Let's 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 go. Let's continue, inshallah. Ta'ala. Afwan Abu Marin. Khair inshallah ta'ala. Naam. Qala Hafidullah, Shaykh Rabbi also said regarding Shaykh Muqbil, who al Mujaddid fi Bilad al Yemen. He is the reviver of the land of Yemen. Wa anna hu la yujid mundu zaman abdul razak al sanani. إلى يومنا هذا من قام بالدعوة وجددها كالوادع. Listen to what Sheikh Rabi said, Ikhwan. The Sheikh Muqbil is the reviver of the land of Yemen that call. And there is not present, there has not been present from the time of Abdul Razak al Sanani. And he is Ikhwan ibn Nafi' ibn Nafi' Abdul Razak ibn Nafi' as the Dhahabi says, Al Hafid al Kabir. Alim al-Yamin, 
the scholar of Yemen, Abu Bakr al-Himyari. Naam. Shaykh Rabi, he says that from the time of Abdul Razak al-Sanani until this day of ours, there is not one who has established the dawah and revived the dawah in Yemen like Shaykh Muqbil al-Wadi'i. Tremendous praise, Ikhwan. And I wanted to mention, Ikhwan, Allahu Akbar, they asked Shaykh, Shaykh Muqbil, what was the affair of Yemen when he returned, when he returned, Yanni, from his studies? And he said he thought about there was a man that he knew in Saudi Yani Rajul Fadr the Sheikh, he said. And this man took every opportunity, Yani, to Ya'mur bil ma'roof wa yanha an al munkar. Every opportunity. Bel, rather the Sheikh said, La yatruk munkaran illa ankara alayhi. He didn't leave a munkar except that he refuted it. Sheikh Mukhbir said, When I got back to Yemen, I thought to myself, if he came to Yemen, what would he start with? <laughs> Where would he start? This is Ikhwan, the state of affairs in Yemen at the time. We'll talk more about that, Ikhwan, in the coming lessons. Concerning Ikhwan, again, that call of Ahlul Hadith, it has always been the scholars of Hadith, Ikhwan, who have defended the Sunnah, Ahlul Hadith. It has always been the scholars of Hadith who have defended the Dawah Salafiyyah. One need look only back at Abdullah ibn Abbas refuting the Khawarij. Going and refuting the Khawarij, defending the Sunnah, defending the Aqidah, defending the Manhaj as Sahih in the face of the Khawarij. One only need look at Imam Malik, Ikhwan in the Masjid. When the man asked about this Diwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Kayf, he removed that man from the Masjid. One only need look at Ikhwan at the likes of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Rahimahallah ta'ala ikhwan who stood in the face of the Jahamiyyah ikhwan of Ifikum and was tortured in the Mihna. One need only look ikhwan at the likes of Imam al-Bukhari in his tremendous work, Khalq of Al Ibad, the creation of the actions of worshippers, in refutation of the Jahmiyyah. One only need look ikhwan in, in, in our times from Shaykh Wana Shaykh Muqbil at Tali'a, the Raj al Ghulat al Shia, the refutation upon the extreme Shia. One need only look at Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, refuting the likes of the murji and other than them from the deviant sex. And we will talk more about that, inshallah ta'ala, ikhwan, in the coming lesson, bi-ithnillahi tabarakah wa ta'ala. Qal al-Hakim al-Naysaburi. Qal al-Hakim al-Naysaburi. And he is ikhwan Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Hilal. He is Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Muhammad ibn Muhammad Al-Imam Al-Hafiz Al-Naqid Al-Allama Shaykh Al-Muhaddithin Abu Abdullah Al-Shafi'i Now Ikhwan, in his praise, in the praise for Al-Hakim and Al-Saburi As we said, Ikhwan Muhammad ibn Abdullah He is called Al-Naqid A critic But this was a praiseworthy description in the past, Ikhwan, they will call a person a naqid, Ikhwan, one who, like the likes of a dhahabi, who will look through the chains of narration, for example, and clarify the authentic from the weak. Allah ibn fikum. Ya The young brother there. You taking notes on your phone? You taking notes on your phone? Ah, tayyib, la bas. Allah ibn Rafiq. Ayakum Allah. Naam. Shaykhuna Shaykh Rabi Ikhwan in his tremendous work and naqs, manhajun shari'iyun. He mentions Ikhwan, this is the meaning Ikhwan, that criticism is an Islamically legislated methodology. And the Shaykh, he says, Ikhwan, that the people. Yani mentioned this and they mentioned that. He said, I am a naqid, Yani. And of course, from the humility of the Sheikh, simply from the humility of the Sheikh. But the shadow, the point is, Ikhwan, that this term, Ikhwan, is a noble term. Though some people in these times try to flip it and turn it into something, Yani, blameworthy, that an individual, Ikhwan, would criticize that which is deserving of criticism. That which is, is deserving of criticism. And they said, he said, Ikhwan, and we'll end on this narration.
الله يبارك فيكم قال الحافظ في مقدمة الكتاب معرفة علوم الحديث الحاكم من يسبوري what was his name محمد بن عبد الله ابن محمد أحسن he said it was a tremendous work معرفة علوم الحديث the book of يعني مصطلح يعني حديث terminology the sciences of حديث look why he wrote the book يعني عن سبب تأليفه فإني لما رأيت البدعة في زماننا كثرات when I saw innovation increase now this is again الحاكم and he's he's looking around when he saw innovation began to increase ومعرفة الناس بالسنن قد قلت and the people's knowledge of the sunnah had decreased so the affairs of innovation increased knowledge of the sunnah decreased and this is the affair because of course the sunnah is opposite of innovation and when innovation comes as the scholars have mentioned it destroys a sunnah opposite of it and likewise when the sunnah is established it destroys an innovation that is opposite of it so al-hakim and he says ikhwan ma im'anihim في كتابة الأخبار despite their devotion to recording narrations ah this is important so there were a lot of people recording narrations but they had no fiqh no proper application no proper understanding and this is why we have said this ikhwan repeatedly sometimes you look in the books of Rijal in the books of the narrators and you'll see for example regarding a narrator say arwahum that he narrated the most narrations on his sheikh but he might be da'if he narrated a whole lot, but he didn't have precision. So the fact that a person narrates abundantly does not necessitate that he is a person of correct understanding. So he says, Ikhwan, with the fact that they, there is devotion, you know, the likes of this to recording narrations, and there are a number of negligent and derelict seekers of hadith. So they're seeking hadith again, but they're being, they're being يعني, negligent in that which they are seeking. So look what Al-Hakim and Al-Saburi says. When he saw that, what did it prompt him to do? When I saw that, it prompted me to author a, a, a small book comprising the various sciences of hadith. He knew the remedy, Ikhwan, for that which he was seeing was the proper understanding of the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we'll stop here inshallah and I apologize for going late but we wanted to take as much benefit as we could